it's Sammy and Chloe and happy, happy Pride! Pride! There we go. So, I figured since it's Pride Month we were going to do a very, very special video today that might help you guys kind of build your confidence in who you are. And also you can get to know Sammy. Get to know me a little bit better. Yeah. So yeah, today's video I'm going to tell you my coming out story and do some beautiful makeup. See you soon. And I will have the lovely job of editing this. Hi YouTube, happy Pride Month. I feel that now's the time to tell you all exactly how important Pride Month is and exactly what it means to me. Looking back, my 13 year old self would not believe how much of a badass, confident lesbian lady I've become. My story started way back in year 8. At this point I didn't know who I was or much about LGBT, but after all the negative experiences and lack of happiness I'd experienced being with boys, I knew that maybe there was something more out there, I just didn't know what. So when I was in year 8 I met someone with whom I was very close. That person opened my eyes to what the world really could be like. One kiss changed everything and in that moment I felt a sensation that I could never have felt with the boys. I'm not going to lie, when this happened to me I found it really difficult to understand why I was the way I was. At the time I didn't say anything to anyone because I was scared and I wasn't sure in myself whether this was just an experimental phase or whether this was who I was destined to be. This ended up being an experimental phase, you know, there's awkward moments where you realise that a woman's body really is the thing that you're attracted to. It was never really a relationship, just, you know, kisses here and there. But looking back at it now, I'm glad it happened because that person helped me and I helped that person. A week later, I had tutor period, which is like a lesson where they teach you life skills and it's shit. <laughs> I can remember going into form and sitting with the people who I thought my friends at the time. They were both popular girls and one of them had been friends with me since primary school. For this particular lesson, we had a supply teacher and the topic was Pride Month and Understanding LGBT. The PowerPoint was very informative. I learnt that gay meant two men and lesbian meant two women and obviously bisexual means both. And bisexual honestly felt like me. Um, because my class seemed so hyped up and accepting of everything, I decided to face the truth and come out. At that time I wasn't sure what the reaction of the class would be so I spoke to the girl who I thought was going to be obviously accepting but I said to her I'm bisexual hoping she wouldn't tell anyone but the look she gave me was pure shock. She then whispered to her other friend and before I know my sexuality got spread across the school like wildfire. At the time I felt like my world would have crumbled, I felt insecure like a freak. I didn't know whether I how I felt about women was normal or whether the next day I'd be able to go to school. I now realise that none of that matters. With good time I've learnt that people are always going to say what they're going to say regardless of how much breath you waste trying to convince them that what they're saying is morally incorrect. People will not stop saying what their poisoned minds believe and yet yeah, everyone's entitled to their own opinion but not when it destroys others lives and disrupts the flow of society. Some things are better left unsaid. I mean, please be careful about what you say because people are sensitive. I mean, now I know that none of that matters. What others have to say, just screw it. My happiness is the most important. Whether I'm gay, straight or just not into relationships, my happiness and the one that, the happiness of the person I love is what's most important. I had a lot of people in the changing rooms at school making petty comments and a lot of the boys saying, Are you really bi? Ew. Ew! And you know, all that obvious crap from the homophobes. This made lessons very difficult because I was being targeted and constantly questioned. I think the most asked question was, well, how do you even have sex with a girl? From the knowledge I'd gained from researching as part of coming out, I said, well, there are many different ways of doing it. And of course they all wanted to know more, but I could tell they were just taking the piss. So I just said to them, well, you know what, you don't need to know. And if you don't know, then you're missing out. 
So then there were more experimental gay moments. I went through a period of time where I was single and not interested in relationships. This was because of the bullying that happened. I could tell I could never get changed with PE because the popular girls made me feel like I didn't belong. They kept taunting me and making it out that I only wanted to be in the changing room and to stare at them in their bras. And I was in love with them. Ew. As if, dumb bitches. But it doesn't work like that. We don't fall for fake plastic personalities and the girls who work out every day and think they're fit, when in reality the only thing we can see is how ugly they are. Inner beauty's more important. Like, how arrogant do you have to be to think that someone is attracted to girls, they'll be attracted to you when they barely know you? When I went through this period, I gave up looking for the lover of my dreams. Bear in mind at this point I was only 14. Love doesn't happen that fast. Come on, love. But of course, my relationships were toxic, so I had a new relationship every week. That and I didn't think I was going to be the relationship type, and I began to get bored of seeing men, men, and more boring men. Until I went online and I tried a long distance relationship, you know, not that far away, only 3,788 miles. I was talking to a girl and for her protection let's call her Luna. Luna lived in Canada and we spoke to each other after we met online. She had autism and so do I. We were both pretty vulnerable and we used to get along well. Long story short, this relationship was going well and I was very happy on Google Hangouts. I know how old. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Me and Luna used to call each other every night and used to fall asleep to the sound of her voice. In this moment of my bisexuality, I discovered Steven Universe, which, by the way, is still one of my favourite shows and probably, like, my whole gay awakening. I just wanted to find someone who'd love me the way Ruby loved Sapphire. I knew that I was going to be Sapphire because I'm quite girly and shy when people take me on a date, and I knew that I was kind of into girls who were more masculine than me. Me and Luna used to sing Steven Universe songs and do the voice acting to go along with it. We had a Ruby and Sapphire theme going on. I loved being her Laffy Saffy. As me and Luna grew closer, my mum asked me who I was talking to. I explained to her that it was my girlfriend from Canada. My mum went ballistic. She hated the fact that I was bisexual at the time and she told me I didn't really like girls and it was all a phase. This of course caused us to have multiple arguments. My mum didn't support me like I thought she would. And of course when you're questioning, who you are, the support of your family and the ones who love you are, is key. About a week later I went for a family meal. I came out to one of my family members and she supported me massively. Obviously being a part of the LGBT herself, she told me that it didn't matter who I loved as long as I was happy. She said that this would help, she'd help me every step of the way and that she was only a text message away when she gave me her phone number. Then I showed her a picture of Luna but obviously she said that she was concerned about how Luna's far away and how I could find somewhere, someone closer. That day I was on FaceTime to Luna and my stepdad's family were there. One of them asked me to, who I was talking to and in panic I said, oh this is my boyfriend, he's just got long hair. I know, major fuck up. I should have said, I should have just come out there and then and saved myself the anxiety. That Christmas I got my act together and I told them the truth. They were all surprised, but None of them seem to have a problem with the fact that I was bi. Note to self, don't try to anticipate people's reactions because even if you haven't known them that long and you aren't sure how they'll react, you don't know. Don't try and guess. Every person is different and we will have a different understanding of what LGBTQIA plus means to them. So it might be that you will wind yourself up for no reason. Stop wasting energy on the what if. And think about the fact that you are ready to show your true colours. Me and Luna ended up breaking up for natural reasons. I left for a bit because nobody wanted to date me. I know, tragic! I suppose at that time I was being in relationships for the sake of it. Don't do it guys, allow yourself to, s to stay where you are. Otherwise you'll lower your standards and be treated like shit. So time skipped to 2020 because I can't remember the relationships in between. They must have been really insignificant. Lockdown, age 16. Before we went into lockdown, I was cosplaying and posting my cosplay videos for the world to see. I had a cosplay friend called French and Back Brat Cosplay who taught me everything I needed to know about cosplay. Also, I was heavily inspired by Steven Universe cosplayers Kelly Kirsten and For the Love of Claude because they are lesbians who completely rock. 
I got a comment on one of my videos from a younger girl, about two years younger, and let's call her Jess. When I laid eyes on her profile, I was instantly attracted. She then sent me a message and complimented me and called me beautiful. So she then asked me to teach her about cosplay and how to do makeup, and I did exactly that. We got close until she got brave and asked me out. At that time, I said yes. Again, we are about three hours away from each other in long distance. This girl was the one who inspired my other gay obsession, DC Harley Quinn. We had a plan to cosplay together. I wanted to be Harley Quinn and she wanted to be Ivy. This relationship didn't last long because one day she decided to break up with me out the blue. So that summer I left school and did the NCS program. On the program I met many friends. Long story short, over two weeks I somehow fell head over heels for a girl who I thought was a nice person that most turned out to be the biggest bitch. Stay tuned. Let's call her Fred. Now this relationship was best based off the most bizarre ship, Fred X Daphne. We did a Scooby Doo show to raise money for charity. I was Daphne and she was Fred. Throughout the weeks we had gotten to know each other and she had made me laugh, kept me smiling and even supported me by giving me her hoodie when my period came through my jeans. The other day, when it was warm, I fell asleep on her bum. It was soft like a cushion. I honestly thought she was the best thing ever until she did what she did to me. The last day we spent together on the programme, we took photos together. But if you look at her body language, see? Absolutely no interest whatsoever! She was just being gay for a laugh! Why was I so stupid? No, God! Oh, God, please, no! No! So me and her stayed in contact and we used to FaceTime before sixth form and, well, she went to college. This girl was important to me, so important that for her 17th birthday we went to Pizza Hut and her best friend, her straight best friend, challenged her to a pizza eating contest. I ate 16 pieces of pizza, a record which I later beat with Chloe on my 19th birthday. Thank you Chloe for being the best fiancé ever. Because she'd invited me to her birthday and left me in Costa when she fucked off for an after party with her best friend. Run. I invited her to my birthday meal where we went and watched the Peter Pan pantomime. As you could tell, it was such a loving relationship. I invited her over to my house that day. Before she came over, I had given her hints that I liked her, and we even had a little joke between the two of us where I called her Blondie. I was that dorky, I sent her a video of me spinning a frying pan. That day we spent loads of time together, but she completely slandered my makeup skills and convinced me that she was the master of makeup because everything that she owned was from Boots number 7. Blah, 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 you posh twat. Anyway, she did my makeup. I took some attractive photos on the toilet, attached photo here, and she made me look like an absolute tart. After this, I showed her my scrapbook. She read through the fact that I like her and she seemed quite happy. In fact, she allowed me to put on my lingerie in front of her and she lay with me on the bed. She even showered me, washed my hair and made fake orgasm sounds. In the end, she asked me out, called me her girlfriend, took more photos with me, wore matching promising necklaces, and signed a contract to say if by the time we were 25 and we weren't married, that she would marry me. Then she left for scouting camp, another factor I found sexy. I like a girl with outdoor skills, but Chloe's the best fire maker I've ever met. She kept her hot tub warm, her yurt warm. She's brilliant. She knows how to make a great teepee. But I cried so much without her because she was my girlfriend and having no contact with her scared me. Then she decided to block me out for fucking no reason. We then met up again and she said she would take me on a makeup date. You know, to make things better between the two of us after she left me for no fucking reason. But you know what, just as it gets worse, she decides to bring her straight best friend on a fucking date! Mood killer much? Shit, here we go again. Anyway, I was determined to win her over. This date was at Ikea about 30 minutes away from where I lived. 
to get ready for that day, I took my makeup into school, did my work, get, did my work in the common room, did my makeup at the exact same time. I sent her a photo of it, which I'll attach, and she told me it looked messy. There were no words about, you know, my natural beauty or how nice it was that I made the effort for the day. I took my leather jacket to school with me. I wore a pink leather jacket and a cute top set and pink boots. The same outfit I wore for Barbie Girl Trend. Attach Barbie Girl photo here. The taxi cost me 30 quid! Where's my money, bitch? I wouldn't even waste a penny on that bitch now. In my head it was going to be so glamorous and, you know, we could try out the bed. Disgusting! Okay. But she ran off ahead of time and ignored me the whole night. When she realised I was agitated, she had a one-to-one -one conversation with me. And she told me everything was fine and that she still loved me. No, she fucking didn't. So eventually I got sick of this and I called her out. I asked I asked her, you're supposed to be my girlfriend, what are you doing? At this point she says to me, I'm not gay. Before getting in the car with her straight best friend and leaving me there in tears. Stood in a car park, cold, freezing and alone. And that was the last I heard from her. You know what, the next day I was so upset, couldn't even go to school, but I dragged myself out of bed and I went to see my math teacher, who's my biggest support. You are the best maths teacher! And she told me that, there, that eventually I'd find a girl who would really love me. So then I spent time on dating apps at the age of 17. I just used to chat to women for fun and for comments and for the attention I never got. I was on Plenty of Fish when I was 17 years old and there I found Chloe! We were an instant match but I didn't speak to her again because obviously I wasn't at age and I thought she was such a brilliant person that I wasn't going to play her and be underage on dating apps. So what I did was I left it a little bit and when I turned 18 I went on Facebook dating. This is where I met up with Chloe. We went to Starbucks and our relationship started. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment and subscribe for more content. We're always open to ideas. Thank you so much, my lovelies. Videos once a month. See you in the next one.